Hey friends, it's your boy SVH coming at you with today's bowl of sake by Hazrat Nayak Khan for June 9th. The final victory in the battle of life for every soul is when he has risen above the things which once he most valued. Yeah, this is a great one, you know, and uh, I, I, I think the first thing that comes to mind when I read this um, is uh, in the in the autobiography um, that uh, or his biography, which was partly autobiography um, from Hazrat Nayak Khan. Um, he speaks of how um, he gave up his music. Um, he was a master musician. You know, I've probably talked about it in other videos, but Hazrat Nayak Khan was a, a master musician from a young age in India. Uh, by the time he was, I think, 13, he had he had reached every all the highest accolades of any of the musicians of India. And Indian musicians are highly skilled. Um, they work with a lot of microtones and different types of phrasing and, and uh, uh, rhythm, rhythmic patterns and polyrhythms and all these type of things. And uh, I think it was 13, he had reached the highest accolade and uh, became known as uh, as a master musician of India. And... Uh, you know he had he had done this his whole life it had been his his real passion his real joy and uh, he actually brought indian classical music to the west uh, one of the first traveling groups um from uh from india that had come over and played this indian classical music and uh it wasn't all that well received at the time but uh in america that is in the in the, the west but um he uh, started teaching these classes on Sufism and giving these lectures and uh, that really took off and people really resonated with it and that became his life's vocation then was to spread this Sufi message of love, harmony and beauty. And um, it was through this realization and this understanding that there was a greater need for him uh, to be teaching this, this teaching as opposed to playing music um, that he gave up his music. Um, because he said that it had given him all uh, that he could get from it or uh, something something of that nature um, that it had given him all that he needed or all that uh, that it was meant to give him uh, because now his job is to tune souls and illuminate hearts and tune souls to their original note um, and man has not, that not been my mission since I uh, came across this path and these teachings is to, to fine tune my own note and to tune others' hearts uh, to that uh, note that is within them. And um, this really is the final victory in the battle of life uh, because there's a lot of things that we value so much and we put such a, a high standard on that really mean um, very little in the big scheme of things. Now, now Mercy to him, his music was not a little thing, right? Um, but just that's, that, that was the greatness. That was the power within him, the will to be strong enough to say, and he's still saying, and he still did other things, but to not want to pursue, um, touring and, and playing music, performing live as a, as a, uh, as a, uh, career, so to speak. Um, but really went with his vocation of teaching this spiritual truth. And um, I can relate so much to this. You know, I, I spent a long time pursuing this dream of music and pursuing this career and wanting to be a rock star and, you know, having uh, some moments where I got to taste a little bit of that and uh, get out there and play some big festivals and tour the U.S. and tour Europe and play with some of my idols and things like that. So I've been very blessed, you know, and, and really appreciate um, all the support that I got over the years um, doing it. But... Uh, you know, it was always doing it to chase some other level of achievement. You know, it's like it's like a video game. You're trying to unlock the the next level. So you got to beat the end boss and get to the next level. So first it's uh, get a band, you know, and, and start playing. Cool, you beat the end boss. Now you go on to the next level. Now you got to get a couple gigs and play out live. And you do that. And the next thing you get to get the booking agent. And the next thing, you, do, you know, and just keep rising up the ladder until you get to the end game, which is, uh, you know, stardom and fame and you know wealth and all those things uh that people dream of when they when they try to get into that um but for me you know i've come to realize how much more joy i have uh writing music performing music playing music um when i don't have to put all that pressure on myself to try to be 
a, a big star doing it, right? Um, I, I've, I've made an impact on, on a few souls out there. And uh, I think that this thing that I'm doing here right now, talking to you folks, doing the bowl of sake every day, sharing some teachings, um, and uh, infusing that into the art that I do is uh, really where it's at for me these days. So um, I feel that uh, I have risen above um, one of the things that I valued most, which is um, this pursuit of this dream of being a big music star. Um, and uh, it, it's beyond that at this point. There's there's less um, need for that in the in the mo in the moment uh, for me to really feel like uh, I, I need to pursue something more uh, than what I'm doing. I, I love writing, I love creating, I love um, recording things and expressing them. I'm collaborating with a few different artists and it feels good, you know? And uh, working with some of my heroes still uh, in my day job, doing some some other projects on the side and things like that. So it feels good. And uh, it's uh, one of those things where it is a battle. Uh, because it was a battle for me for a long time to be like, I'm not on stage, I'm not doing this. And then kind of watching my old band succeed and do different things was difficult. Um, but uh, you have to rise above that and fight through it and victoriously come out on the other side with the realization that there, there's, um, there's more to life than everything that we value, put so much value on. And um, I'll end it with this. You know, I think that that's where we're at in these days today is that people value... Um, the, 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 the most ridiculous thing, they value the likes on Instagram or Facebook. You know, I like it when you guys like my videos and all that, but I, it's, it's not a value to me in the sense that I, um, I put, uh, any kind of, uh, equity on my life, uh, based on any of that. Um, but a lot of people do, um, a lot of people's shoes are, are so special to them and, and they're the most important thing and the most valued thing. And, um, it could be, you know, anything, uh, really, whether it's a, a material object or a, a person or uh, a career um, goal or, or anything like that, um, that can become the most valued treasure. But really the most valued treasure that you have is your relationship to God, your realization of God and uh, your soul and uh, what your soul offers in that uh, experience that, that we live uh, during these short years that we're here on this this uh, spinning disc, um, as I like to call it. So, uh, yeah, a, l a lot of great uh, great things that I could say about this bowl of sake. But that's the one that really struck me today, is that Mershid um, had given up his music um, to teach the thing that was most valuable to him. And, uh, you know, what, what, a, what a sacrifice. Um, but, man, what a blessing. Here we are hundreds of years later. A hundred years, not hundreds over a hundred years later, um, sharing these words and, and this, uh, teaching in a way that, uh, that brings value to you. So, uh, I appreciate all of you that tell me, uh, that you like these things and that you watch these things. And, uh, when I don't do them, asking me to keep doing them and things like that. So, um, I value that. Um, and, uh, I really appreciate uh, your support. So hope you all have a blessed night and I will see you again tomorrow with another bowl of sake.